mix up at Heaven's Gate. You know how people say that you won't feel anything when you die, that there's no pain? That's bullshit. It burned through me like a raging fire for hours after the crash, but I knew I'd died on impact. Besides the steering wheel, the last thing that ran through my mind was the grim realization that Tom was right. I should have slowed the fuck down, as he so eloquently put it. Tom had been my best friend since primary school. Tall, athletic, handsome, smart, and charming. He was everything that I wanted to be. Of course, I shouldn't begrudge him what he was born with, but I'd be lying if I said that being his friend was easy. He was a natural at everything he tried, beating me at everything. And I had the biggest crush on his perfect girlfriend, Samantha. So it had been a huge deal to me when I passed my driving test before him, hence the showing off. So there I was, slumped over in the driver's seat as a result of my own stupidity, the pain finally beginning to ebb away. Sweet release came in the form of nothingness as my spirit slowly abandoned the broken vessel. Fading, fading, gone. And for the longest time there was only darkness. And then there was a light. I gazed through the surrounding fog in astonishment. A line sprawled out ahead leading to what looked like a check-in desk. Looking back, I saw Tom a few places back. He shook his head at me in a way that clearly said, I'm not talking to you. Totally understandable, to be honest. I did get him killed, after all. Heaven, a loud voice would periodically declare before the person at the front of the line was directed to a glowing blue circle burned into the fluffy white ground. With the push of a button from the man at the desk, they would vanish in a plume of blue smoke. Not once did he shout hell. Next, he boomed in a bored voice as I hit the front of the line. A golden plaque on the polished wooden desk read Mr. Simmons. Behind it sat a balding man in his mid to late fifties looking down at a clipboard. Hmm, says you died in a car accident along with a friend? I nodded numbly. Yes, sir. Um, could you... I was interrupted by a small man pushing by, apologizing profusely. When he reached the desk, he whispered something in Mr. Simmons' ear, whose tired eyes widened slightly. Oh, I see. No need for that. I'll deal with it. Thank you, Winston. The small man bowed and hurried away. Excuse me, sir, I said hesitantly, but where are we exactly? Can't you read, boy? He pointed at a sign suspended above him that read, Heaven's Gate. In answer to my unspoken follow-up question, he continued, We send so few people to hell that there's no point including it in the name. Plus, Heaven's Gate has a much better ring to it than Heaven and Hell's Gate, wouldn't you say? Um, yes sir. So, what happens to us? Well, now that is the question, isn't it? Winston just informed me that one of you survived the crash and is only here by mistake. It's extremely rare that something like this happens, usually involving a lot of paperwork and someone in the surveillance department losing their job. But as it's very nearly the end of my shift, I really don't have time for all that. So just give me your name and I'll have this sorted out in a jiffy. I looked back at Tom, eyeing me over the shoulders of the people in front. He must have survived. There was no way I could have. With a heavy sigh, I turned back to the man and asked, What happens to the other? He glanced down at the clipboard and shifted uncomfortably. Well, they will be spending their eternity in... He cleared his throat a little, as if the last word had gotten stuck in his throat. Hell. He finished meekly. It hit me like a ton of bricks. What on earth had I done to deserve that? Sure, I was prone to some less than savory thoughts every now and then, but who wasn't, right? It's not like I would have ever acted on them. Reluctantly, I gave him my name. Mr. Simmons sighed solemnly. I'm sorry, kid, but hell really isn't as bad as they say on Earth, you know. Think of it as an indefinite stay at a rundown hotel, with just a smidge of torture every now and then. His smile vanished when he saw the look on my face. I'll let you say goodbye to your friend. When you're done, stand at the second circle on the left and tell him to stand on the next one over. I'll buzz you both through. After pulling Tom from the line, I led him over to our respective circles whilst withstanding his onslaught of questioning. When he was in position, I held up a hand to silence him. 
Apparently there's been a mistake, I explained. You survived the crash, so they're sending you back to your body. His face lit up at the news. He started babbling about the people he couldn't wait to see and the things he couldn't wait to do, but his excitement quickly faltered. Wait, you said I survived. What about you? I forced a smile. Oh, I'm dead as a donut. Sucks, right? His demeanor flicked to one of outrage, but before he could say anything, I decided to lie. Don't worry. Simmons said I'm going to heaven. It won't be so bad, and there's nothing we can do about it anyway. My body got completely messed up in the crash. I'll meet you in heaven whenever you really do die. Deal? Eyes beginning to brim with tears, he nodded sadly in agreement. I gave Mr. Simmons a signal to say we were ready, and with the push of a button, we plunged into the darkness once again. Heat and pain were the first to greet me, smoke invading my nostrils as I gasped my first breath. Squinting through the hazy air, I noticed a figure to my right, a corpse. My corpse. The sight of the fire dancing across the car's interior spurred me into action. I shouldered open the passenger door and spilled out onto the road. After stumbling a short distance clear of the wreckage, I fell to my knees and drank in the fresh air. I couldn't believe I'd gone through with it. Telling Mr. Simmons that my name was Tom had been a stroke of brilliance. I had to congratulate myself on that. So many things could have gone wrong. I mean, the fact that Simmons went purely on name is still hilarious to me. Getting used to Tom's body was a little tricky at first, but I got the hang of it pretty fast. His memories are mine now, along with everything else, so continuing his life has been a walk in the park. The hardest part was attending my own funeral a few weeks back. I'll never forget my parents' faces as they watched my coffin lower into the dirt, tears streaming down their cheeks. It was upsetting for me, too. But I felt much better after a quick glance down at Samantha tucked lovingly under my arm. So I've doomed my best friend to an eternity of hell so that I could steal his life. How do I feel about that now? Well, pretty damn good to tell you the truth. I've been having a blast. Guess I'm not worthy of heaven after all. Who knows, maybe I'll find a way to trick them again when my second death comes along. <laughs>